LibreWolf is an easy to use, open source, hardened web browser that is based on Firefox and is also one of the best browsers out there that strikes a good balance between being easy to use, easy to install, it's well maintained, and it provides excellent privacy settings by default. Uh, so like I said, it's very easy to install. You can just grab it from the LibreWolf community's GitLab. Uh, if we go in here under browser, and of course I'll leave a link to all this in the description, uh, there's going to be a few different options for installation. So if you're on Arch, then you can just install LibreWolf from the AUR. If you're on Gentoo, uh, then you can add this eBuild. Now keep in mind that this is a binary, so you don't have to compile it, uh, but there you know, is some benefit to using this. You can have your updates managed by Portage instead of having to deal with it separately. There's even a Windows build that is coming soon, so eventually even those folks can use LibreWolf. And there's also flat packs and tarballs and app images available uh, if we just go into the general Linux section. So unfortunately, if you're on any other distro besides like Gentoo and Arch Linux, then this is how you're going to want to install LibreWolf. Uh, there is work being done to get it working on Debian and its derivatives. Uh, like if we look at this open issue here, uh, that's pretty much tracking what's going on with that. Uh, and there's a script here for building it. Um, somewhere in here, yeah, I think it's this one here. Uh, but it's only been tested on Linux Mint 19.1 so far because uh, apparently you're supposed to build it like in Docker or something like that. So they're trying to work on getting it uh, to the point where you can just install it on Linux Mint just like how you would do it on Gentoo or you would do it on Arch, make it really easy. Uh, but like I said, for now there are app images available and there are tarballs available. So that's what I'd recommend. In fact, that's what I'm using right now on Linux Mint 20 to record this. If we go to the releases page, uh, that's probably going to be the best place to get the app image. So I'll make sure to leave a link to this in the description as well. Uh, but basically, you're going to want the LibreWolf uh, 8402 uh, blah 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 86 underscore 64 app image, um, or you know newer version if you happen to be watching this in the future because it is kept pretty up to date. Like every new build of Firefox that's released. Uh, basically gets turned into a LibreWolf build by this team uh, after they apply their privacy settings and all of that good stuff. Uh, so what are these privacy settings that makes it so great? So there's no telemetry, uh, no phoning home or any of that nonsense that Firefox does by default. G hacks are built in by default, which if you don't know, that bundles together a bunch of privacy settings uh, and fingerprinting resistance, and also basically spoofs a user agent uh, that makes it so that your computer can't be uniquely identified. So like if we look at my system information here on deviceinfo.me, my operating system is being reported as Windows 10, uh, a 32-bit version, uh, pretty funny. I wonder how many of those actually show up in the wild. Um, if we scroll down a bit more to my hardware info, uh, let's see, so like microphones aren't being detected, webcams aren't being detected, graphics cards aren't being detected. Normally, if you have any of that stuff in your computer, it can be detected when you go to websites. Uh, not even my CPU is able to be detected accurately. It thinks that I only have two cores. Uh, it basically thinks that I'm on a 32-bit system, which like I obviously am not. I'm on... 64-bit uh, one. Um, it can't read your battery status or anything like that. Again, these are all things that normally in a web browser, anytime you go to a website, if they're doing fingerprinting, they can detect all of this stuff. Um, so yeah, we see my user agent there again. Um, it's uh, not really able to detect any of my plugins either, or my extensions rather. I'm not sure. Uh, where that was it's it's oh, yeah, here we go browser plugins So it's not able to detect those not detecting any Firefox extensions um, So yeah, there you go. And also we're using the latest version of TLS by default There's other privacy settings that we can take a look at if we go into about config uh, We want to show all 
So basically, uh, everything that is in bold here, uh, I believe was a default setting in Firefox that was changed in order to enhance its privacy settings. And you know, this is all stuff that you would have to do yourself to actually get Firefox to be more private because, you know, there's a lot of people that praise Firefox for being this pinnacle of privacy, but I think a lot of those people are just eating the member berries, you know, they're remembering the times when Firefox actually was a champion of privacy and not just Google's little ball washers. Um, so yeah, any bold settings are going to be changed from the default. There's also a lot of settings that are locked. Uh, and these are settings that, again, could potentially compromise your privacy, and so they're locked uh, to basically keep you from even being able to change it. Now, it is possible uh, to take these locks off. Uh, that's all documented on LibreWolf on uh, their website. Uh, basically, they just do this to, I guess, make it so that curious, curious users uh, don't go in and accidentally change something that's going to make their privacy worse. Um, we can take a look at more settings in preferences and uh, we're going to see the same thing going on. So like with um, your browser privacy, uh, standard and strict, neither one of those are good enough. We're going straight for custom. Uh, so the only things that you can change, well, this is pretty much how the default is. Uh, in fact, actually, by default, it was blocking all third party cookies, um, but that might cause some sites to break. So I just didn't actually do that for the recording of this video. Um, you're always going to have a do not track signal being sent and you don't have a choice in changing that. Uh, delete cookies and site data when LibreWolf is closed, that's gonna happen by default. Um, you can change that if you want. Uh, logins and passwords, yeah, you can change that stuff. Uh, let's see, history, so by default it's going to clear when everything's uh, closed. LibreWolf data collection. So y they they do not collect any of your data by default. And in fact, they don't even want you enabling this. They do not want any of your data. How many other browsers do that? Uh, deceptive content. That's unchecked. You don't really need that. Uh, HTTPS only mode. So this is enabled by default for all windows. So again, really good defaults that we have for our privacy and security. Uh, if we come over to search, so we're gonna see that our uh, default search engine is DuckDuckGo and all of the different search engines that we have to choose from are all gonna be privacy respecting. Well, I don't really know why Wikipedia is in here. That's not really a search engine. Uh, but yeah, DuckDuckGo, uh, DuckDuckGo Lite, Surex, StartPage, Jive, Quant, Metagur. Uh, these are all privacy respecting search engines. Uh, I think they're pretty much ranked in order too, although I would probably put Surex above DuckDuckGo. That's probably, uh, you know, top tier. Uh, but yeah, you've got all of that stuff really good. You know, if we try to search for anything, we see that these are the search engines provided. So you can't even accidentally do a Google search or a Bing search. You're gonna be asking your duck everything. And then if we take a look at our home settings, uh, so Pocket is disabled. Um, it's Apparently Pocket is some separate add-on that you can install, but they took it out of LibreWolf, which I really like because Pocket is really annoying. Uh, they also disable highlights and all that nonsense. So if you open a new tab, you just get this nice white screen, uh, no Pocket, no bullshit that normally pops up down here. Oh, and I forgot to mention on the search settings. So there's no search search suggestions, and that's also another setting that's disabled. So this is important because when you have these browser or when you have these search engines rather that are providing you search suggestions, they're basically gathering more data about what you're doing. I mean, in real time, they're basically using like AI or, you know, bunch of if else statements to figure out what to suggest for your search based on what you're typing in. Uh, so even though if you're using a privacy respecting search engine like DuckDuckGo that you know supposedly isn't doing anything spooky with your data, you still want to just give them as little data in the first place um, for them to, so that they don't even have the option of doing spooky stuff with it. Uh, so that's another good setting that's provided. And our, um, ad blocking, so that's provided by, 
uh, close that. That's provided by uBlock Origin, which I have off for some reason. Uh, now, this is probably the best ad blocker that's out there uh, for the most part, at least as far as add-ons go. And the settings are pretty good, but I don't really get why they don't have the option of prevent WebRTC from leaking local IP addresses marked. Because, you know, the thing is, if you're using this browser, you probably have some concerns about your online privacy and have you know started to look into improving it at some level. Hell, some of you might have landed on this video for that very reason. And another common thing that people try to do to enhance their privacy along with using a better browser is to use a VPN or a proxy when browsing certain websites to prevent them from knowing their real IP address. Well, WebRTC is one of the most common culprits for leaking IP addresses uh, through you know, websites. They can get your real IP and your location despite you using a VPN if you have WebRTC enabled. So I think that this should be checked by default uh, just to prevent that scenario from happening. Um, now there's a lot of useful documentation for LibreWolf, so you can look um, at the add-ons page, and this goes over some other recommended add-ons um, that don't come with LibreWolf. You know, they don't want to ship their browser with a whole bunch of bloat on it. Uh, plus, uBlock Origin by itself is pretty good. Uh, so you might want to install something like Decentralize. Um, that's a pretty good one. And if you're using Facebook or Google, you might want to install the container add-on um, just so that all of their sites are going to be open within containers. Um, I actually don't really know why no HTTP is recommended as an add-on uh, because there's that HTTPS only mode, which is built into Firefox and thus going to be built into all of its forks, at least all of them that are fairly updated, uh, which essentially does the same thing. So this is this is kind of unnecessary. Um, most of these, I would say, are probably going to be unnecessary, so maybe it'd be worth cleaning this page up a bit. If we go into browser test, there's a good suite of tests for testing your browser. Uh, so there's this um, SSL labs thing, which basically checks to see what version of TLS you're using. And of course I'm using uh, 1.2 and 1.3, which are the most up-to-date ones. Uh, there's am I unique, which just checks to see um, how unique your user agent is, which I'm pretty sure this one isn't because it's like, uh, thinking that it's Windows and Linux at the same time. Yeah, that happens a lot. If only everybody used G-Hacks, then we would all uh, blend in. Um, now, I don't really know why they don't have Cover Your Tracks listed here, because this is kind of like the go-to. Uh, this is the updated uh, version of Panopticlick, uh, which tests a lot of aspects of your browser, mostly tracking. So let's see how this does. Yeah, so we're blocking tracking ads, we're blocking invisible trackers, um, protecting from fingerprint. So yeah, it says we have a unique one. Um, let's see, does it state the fingerprint? I know we saw it back on the privacy info. No, we didn't. Well, I can just show it back here on device info. So basically, part of the reason why, well, <laughs> part of the reason might just be because it thinks we're Windows 10 32-bit, which like I said, you're not gonna see a lot of this in the wild. Um, and also the true operating system core is Linux. So it, it knows that we're Linux pretending to be Windows 10, which that's gonna be pretty unique. Not a lot of people doing that, unfortunately. Uh, things can get a little tricky when it comes to spoofing your uh, user agent to actually make it look legit and make it blend in a lot better. Uh, so it might be worth also installing a user agent spoofer uh, to try and fiddle with the strings a little bit to see what the most unique one that you can get is. Um, but there you go. If you want an easy to use browser, uh, that's a good replacement for Firefox or Chromium that respects your privacy and doesn't make you jump through a bunch of hoops to do it, just install LibreWolf.